I got here, a 1995 F-150. Um, the customer complaint is the crank don't start, and it has no spark. So, I'm gonna crank it. And all it does is it cranks. Now, I don't know if it has uh, RPM. I don't know if it has a, a tax signal because um, this is dead. It's pegged to 80. But pretty much what was done to this truck was that they put in, it looked like a bad wire. They replaced the wire. It worked for a week. And then they put in a bad, and then they put in ignition control module. And it worked for another week. Where well, first the customer put a coil in and it didn't help. And then now it's back. So I don't know. I've dealt with these before. This is the system that uses a pip wire coming from the distributor. And the pip wire sends a signal to fire the coil. So, let's see what we got here. So, right here is the coil. That's new. And the wire's new. And the cap's new. Now, the ignition control module's down here. So pretty much the way this works is it's been on all the Fords. They never changed it. There's an orange and gray wire. That's the pip wire, and that comes from the distributor, and it gives a signal, and then it sends out a, a wire, it sends out a signal to the coil on this wire, and then it fires the distributor. So they're saying we have no spark here. So I want to do some quick tests, just in case something is missed. Just got this set up. All right, so I got a test light connected to battery negative. So, I'm just going to test the spark at the coil. Alright, crank? Yeah. Alright, uh, as you can see. Do it again? We got no spark whatsoever. Alright, I put a booster pack on it because it was cranking slow. Yeah, go again now. Alright, it's going a little faster now, but there's still no spark. Alright, okay, hold on. Now I'm just going to check for power at this wire right here at the coil. Wait, though. Okay, yeah. right there, there's battery power. And now, we're gonna crank it, and I wanna see if this light flickers here. That's control. So it means the coil is good, because we have power going through the coil. All right, crank it. We have no control. There's no flicker over here. All right, okay, great. So we verified that there's no spark. All right, so looking at the diagram, we got here, this wire over here, I think it's called a profile ignition pickup. It's called a pip wire. It comes from the distributor. That's a square wave signal. It also goes to the computer to help with timing. But this wire here gets a square wave. Now, this is the ignition control module, so we need a power and a ground for that. So the power comes from the red and light green wire, which all comes from fuse. Fuse 20 under the hood. So let me quickly check that fuse before I pull the wiring out over here. Sorry, not fuse 20. Fuse U under the hood. It's a 20 amp fuse. Right, how does this work? Um, of course, this is numbered differently. Yeah, they found the diagram. I just found the fuse ID. So fuse U is the first one of the little, let's see. Fuse U. Give me this guy right here. 
All right, so we're connected to the battery. Right now, let's see. I'm gonna turn the key on. All right, keys are on. Now, I should have power on this fuse. And I do. And on this side, okay, good. So now, I'm gonna go to the actual module. I'm gonna check power and ground. So, the module's over here. I'm just gonna unplug it. All right, let's see what we got here. So this wire right here is the pip wire. That's the pickup wire from the coil. Now, let's go back to the other diagram. Red. Pin four, red and light green, and ground is black. So this is the ground, that's pin six. Okay, so the red, it's this guy right here. It is. This guy and this guy. So I'm gonna take a four amp test light. Let's take it across from probe it. It's not gonna spread the terminals, it's tiny little needles. All right. And we see we have a bright test light. All right, so we definitely have a good power on ground. Well, I'm not probed properly, but. All right, so we have a good power now. Now, I gotta check for a signal coming on this wire. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pierce this wire. This is the Pomona piercing cord. They make tiny little holes that after I just fill up with clear nail polish. Right, I'll plug this guy back in. All right, now I'm gonna get a scope connected to this so we can see if we got a signal from the distributor. All right, so I got here a scope, my E scope. Um, I'm gonna connect this to the ground. I'm gonna go here. I know this is a good ground because I've been using it. Right now this. That gets plugged into over there. All right, now we're gonna go crank this and watch the scope. And we wanna see, All right, I'm getting in the truck. And now the truck's running and we have a good signal. I don't know if it was just a bad connection at that, but we have a good signal. I'm assuming the term the pins must be spread on that connector. I don't know, this, this is the worst. But you see here we got a perfect square wave. Usually when it's going bad, you'll see like rounded corners. But this really looks perfect. I'm going to check those connections for pin tension. You know what, right now, actually, I'm going to shake the connector and see if it turns off because it's the only thing I did was unplug it. All right, so I'm shaking it. There you go. See that? I'm shaking it and it shuts off. It's just a bad pin fitment in this connector. Now, it could be it's a bad pin fitment in the terminals also, but I'm going to test these things first. Ooh, is there corrosion in there? I think I see corrosion there also. Right, I gotta pull this apart. But well, that's clearly the issue. All right, I'm gonna pull this apart and bring you back. Okay, so now I got the connector here. It definitely looks a little bit like there's some sort of corrosion in there. But I first wanna test pin tension on these wires. So, I'm gonna use a probe for my AES test kit.
parts of that. Feels tight, but is this the right size? That's the question. Let me try it size smaller. I just feel like it's not long enough, but that could be just how it's set up. Okay, so they all feel decent. So now let me pull this guy out. I want to see the connection of the connector over here. Yeah, there's definitely corrosion in these wires. All right, I'm going to spray this up, try to clean it out better. And then we'll put it back in and see if it stalls out on us. I'll shake it around and do all that. Let me just get this. I'm going to spray it up with the exit. Okay. And now, I use this little file, it's IPA. It fits inside these little things. And it has like diamond, uh, I don't know, hatch grooving. Whatever, that cleans them out. Now the question is, should I also tighten them up a little bit? Well, they feel nice and tight. Now I'm going to get some spray, um, some compressed air now, blow this out. Right. Put it back together, we'll see if it still has the issue. Alright, so, I don't have air to blow it out with. I got some air, but whatever, I'm going to take it right now, and the shop's air is not reaching. Let's put the red connector back in. Put it down. Plug it in over there. Alright. Great. Now let's see if the truck starts up. Alright, the truck started right up. I'm going to play around with the connector. Alright, I'm pushing it pretty hard and not in there. Kind of stalling out. I think it's a fix. Yeah, I'm gonna call this a fix. It was just the dirty connector. All right, so all it was was a bad connector over here because I'm shaking it. What I'm doing. All right, now what I use is clear nail polish. Clear nail polish just to get a little prick mark I made on the wire. Just seals it up so no more corrosion happens. Alright, thanks for watching.